today we're going to be doing a Musa guide. A lot of people have been asking for it on my YouTube channel for quite a while now, and I'm finally just going to cave in. So in this video, we're going to discuss movement and engaging with this class. I think that is a great way to start off because, as you guys know, we are the fastest class in the game. We're the most mobile. And knowing how to move and engage properly is going to change how you play the class as a whole and maybe how you look at it. A lot of Musas overlook movement. They just do the basic cookie cutter stuff and it may work, but it's going to limit how good you play because you, if you fight someone who's pretty experienced, it's going to be very predictable for them to fight you and it's going to result in you getting punished a lot in PvP. So we're going to go ahead and jump into the movement section of the video now. So we're going to talk about movement because a lot of Musas overlook this, and I think if you know how to move properly and have an understanding of how to move properly, it's going to make you a much better Musa, and it's also going to make it much harder to fight you from your opponent's point of view. So, you should already know by now that your animation cancel for chase only works in pre-awakening. It will not work in awakening. It'll look like this. Um, if you don't know how to do that, basically go to input and you look for assign key ww assign it to you, any key you want whatever's comfortable for you i use g and you hold your ww key and left mouse button and you will animation cancel right now we're going to talk about movement with this class what's going to make you a better moose than other mooses now most mooses right now in the game pretty much just chase around like this and then they hold back to block okay that's all dandy and whatever, but the problem is, is that when you hold back to block, right now you're stationary, you're very slow, the opponent can rush you, and when you're doing this, you are no longer the fastest class. You're just sitting there like a, like a potato, not doing anything, chasing around. You're giving your opponent a chance to get close to you or catch up to you. You don't want that. Okay, now as you can see, I consumed quite a bit of stamina, and the problem with this is, when you do that, and then you block, you'll run away, your stamina resource is low. The second reason is this. So, blocking his attacks, and as you can see, my shield is stuck at 74. Now, the problem with this is, not only did I use a lot of stamina, my shield is stuck at 74 and it's not really going to recover. As you can see, if you're blocking a few times, you chase, you're going to lose stamina or use up a lot of stamina very quickly. So, I don't recommend doing that. Also, it's giving your enemy an opportunity to close the gap because you're literally just walking back like this. And you don't want that. As the fastest class in the game, you should be able to control every single 1v1 in terms of the movement and who engages what. You control who rushes you, you control who you push, you control when you want to push. That's how this class is supposed to work. Now it's pretty much intended. So, so you're probably asking me, okay, so what can I do better that solves this? If you watch my videos or watch my stream, you'll notice I very rarely block doing this. Instead, I'm usually in pre-awakening holding Q. There's a big reason for this, but first, I want to explain to you how it works and why it's better. Oh, the way this works is when you chase, you can cancel chase using your basic attack, and it's going to look like this. Oops. Like this. It's going to look like that if you're doing it properly. Um, you're going to slash horizontally. If you time it improperly, it's going to look like this, and you're not going to get the cancel. Okay? The way the cancel works is you have to do a forward chase, horizontal slash, and then Q. Now, if you time this very quickly, it's going to be an animation cancel, and you're going to go from super armor to frontal guard. Okay? It's very similar to how ninjas do their teleport iframe into guard. Very similar. Okay? It looks like this. Okay? As you can see, I'm doing it very quickly. I can block, and I'm moving. I'm moving while blocking super armor and armor. Very safe. I mean super armor and frontal guard, not armor. My bad. Um, yeah, so, very safe stuff. There's a few mechanics you're gonna want to know about this block. Um, it will not work backwards, okay? You cannot cancel this 
going back. There's a second cancel for this block in Awakening. Um, in your Awakening form, you forward chase, C swap, and you can press Q. And it's going to come out immediately. So I'm going to input it at max speed, and you will see I'll be able to block immediately after an Awakening chase. Just like that. Just tap C, press Q immediately as fast as you can. So I'll do it a few more times. Now, the unique thing in Awakening is you can also do this backwards. Do it again. But in Awakening, you cannot do this backwards. So, yeah, okay, so keep this in mind. This is where things are going to get very complicated for a lot of you. I don't think other Musas do this. I might be the only one that does it. Correct me if I'm wrong. But here we go. So something I do is, as we just discussed, you can only do forward chase and get the block off, which is fine. I do a lot of camera movement if you watch my videos or watch my stream when I fight. And I'm going to break this down for you how it works. So basically when you chase, if I hold W, right, let's say my opponent is this siege tower, okay? Let's just say. We'll look at the flag. How about that? A little bit more specific. We're going to look at the flag. All right. Now, that's my enemy right there. So, basically, I hold forward. I look this way. Look back. I just did a back chase. Technically, right? So, it looks like this. Look right back at him. Back at him. Back at him. Back at him. I'm moving back, as you can see, right? I'm moving away from my target, right? But I'm holding forward chase. It's a camera angle thing. Now this is special because I can basically control the direction of my chase and block. So watch. That's my opponent. Chase back. I'm going to look back forward like this. Slash and then Q. But I'm going to do it in real time. Ready? Here we go. Look at that. I'm moving backwards and I'm blocking still. Isn't that amazing? Now, a lot of mooses don't do this. Very good stuff literally promise it's very good and this is really good because i can pretty much go sideways as well look sideways chase i'm chasing like the side like a, like a maywa now you see left side diagonal works fine forward backwards i can go anywhere i want with this chase not only that but i'm armoring myself in a much quicker fashion okay look Let's say I'm fighting this striker fuse over here. We're in a duel. We're far away. Look at this. This is still really fast for most people. Most classes can't keep up with this even still. It's very amazing. It's much better than just blocking and, and awakening. Because look. Look at my stamina bar. My stamina bar is recovering every single time I chase. I'm not using stamina for this at all. It's recovering every single time. Every single time. Um, also, here's what's a little unique about this, okay? If I take some hits from Fuse, watch my blocking shield, guys. Now look. If I'm moving in the real situation, notice how my blocking shield regen. You notice that? It went all the way back up. The reason for this is because I'm chasing, so I'm not blocking, and then I'm slashing to do this. But I'm doing it very consistently. You see? Um, so, not only am I going to be regening mana and regening stamina, I'm regening my blocking shield. It's much better and much safer. Alright guys, I'm going to do the what most muscles do in demonstration. They hold back to block like this. So if he's just going to pretty much try to knock me down here. Which is what most missiles do, basically. Okay, so I just got grabbed for being slow, whatever, yada yada yada. He caught me. Very easy for him to catch me. Okay, now I'm gonna implement it in the camera angle chases. Watch how much tougher it's gonna be for Fuse to catch me.
Notice why I'm still blocking everything too. And I'm avoiding pretty much all of his grabs. This is something a lot of Musos can use and do. So to conclude the movement section of this video, you want to block in pre-awakening doing this because one, you're faster, two, you can regen your blocking shield, three, you're gonna regen stamina, four, you're harder to catch, way harder to catch. Okay, so now that we've concluded the movement part of the video, a lot of the stuff I'm gonna show you right now is going to come hand in hand with the movement cancels. Now, a lot of you well, all of you probably should have stub arrow on your hotbar. This is because you can cancel it from awakening, just like that. And the good thing about this, well, there's a good and bad thing about this, okay? So one, if you hit an opponent with stub arrow, it inflicts as a CC. And just to be correct about this, stub arrow gives off a stiffness. Triple Shock gives off a stiffness as well, which is this. Now the reason this is bad is because it conflicts with the game's CC system. If you're gonna do the same s type of CC, your next CC may completely miss and not land. So it's very important that if you do use the hotbar, you miss Stub Arrow and then Triple Shot. Hit with Triple Shot. So it looks like this. Okay? That's if you're going to be in Awakening and you're going to cast that like this. Now, I don't do that because it's slower. I'm mainly in pre-Awakening like we discussed earlier. And the good thing about pre-Awakening Chase is I could skip Stub Arrow completely and just do Triple Shot. Okay? Look, watch this. It's a lot harder to predict. Now... A lot of good PvPers you fight, they're going to be able to see this, that, oh, he's back chasing, I better watch for the bell, he's gonna, she's going to stun me, okay? That's fine. Let them do that. Let them react to that. We discussed earlier about camera angles. You can pretty much control where your character chases. This is pretty much reverse engineering the blocking cancel, okay? Now, yes, I chase backwards, but if I look this way and my opponent's behind me, now I'm chasing forwards to my opponent. I got closer to him, right? So, look this. That can sometimes throw off your opponent. Very, very hard. So, example is, I'm chasing... I pretty much chased Adam instead of doing this, or I can do like this. Side chase, do that. It's more of just throwing off your opponent, getting each other back, whatever is going to help throw off your opponent, it's going to help. So knowing how to angle your chase can help with engages. So in terms of engaging, I don't recommend using your hotbar, never, because it's going to be slower. If you're going to throw out your bow for an engage, always do it in pre-awakening after a chase. Because then also when you throw it out, you can follow up with this, animation cancel, so it's a lot quicker. Also, don't assume that when you hit the spell, it's always going to land. Never assume that, okay? What you want to do, the proper way to do it is hit the bow and while you're chasing, react. See if they're stunned. If they're stunned, great. Go into a combo. If they're not stunned, go into something that has armor or guard. All right, now your other ungood engage is going to be your Q, which is kind of assassination. It has frontal guard on it. And it's a stun. So if I go up to him, it's going to stun him. Also, one thing to keep in mind is your Q is frontal guard no matter what. If it's on cooldown, it's still frontal guard. The only difference is, is that when you cast Q, off of cooldown, there is no stun. Q has a few good things you should know about it. One, you should know that it has decent range. If I'm standing about right here, I can stun my opponent. It's a, it's a very good skill. It has reach on it. See? Because your character is stepping forward. So, if you're at this distance, let's say about a car length, you can hit your opponent with Q. If I'm chasing, stop right here, I can hit my opponent with Q from that far. 
Okay, now, along with the counter assassination engage, there's a cancel you can do with it. Um, with your Q, you can cross cut and Q like literally immediately. Okay, so watch this. I cast a cross cut. You can very briefly see it. All right, now, the way this works is when you cross cut, you're gonna wanna immediately press Q as fast as you can, so watch. It should look something like that. Okay, now if you input another cross cut too quickly after that, you're gonna slash, like this. You wanna slow it down just a little bit and wait for the window until you can cross cut again. So it's gonna look like this. See it? That's about the timing, okay? Now if you do it too fast, it's, this is going to happen. If you time it right... You can time it very fast. Alright, so we're going to... We're going to do the Costco Q method. Okay, so as you guys can see, I was getting the crosscut Q damage on him, like literally, I think what it's looking like is we're hitting about maybe the first five hits of crosscut, and then we're hitting him with the Q. So all while I'm doing that, I'm getting the damage off of Q. It's very impressive and nice. So sometimes when I engage an opponent, I start with this, and I can get some chip damage off, because if you watch his health, it does quite a bit of damage. As you can see, it's not bad. You're not going to spam this in a fight, but it's good. It's good enough. Just, just a decent amount of damage. Good chip damage. It's good at breaking down shields. And it's safe. That is one thing to know about the Q engage. So, a lot of the times you might see me end a combo like this. And like, I don't hit them. I can do Q, crosscut Q again, and I might get a stun off. Alright, so now that we got the Q engaged, we're going to talk about Twister. Twister is a bit harder to land. It's got forward guard on it and it can do a stiffness. Twister, you want to be a little bit more careful about using. You want to be a little bit closer. Maybe like in their face. A good way to land Twister, I feel, is chasing and just doing Twister. That's probably the easiest way to land Twister. That works just fine. It's got forward guard. It's got a stiffness. Engage. Boom. Like that. The other engage is a bit of a gimmick, it has to do with Rising Storm, I do it quite a bit. It's not completely safe, but sometimes you have to go for the gimmick if you want to knock down. If you look at the skill, uh, C-Swap has forward guard applied during transition. There's a rumor that people say that, oh, well if you're in pre-awakening, go to awakening, or if you're in awakening and go to pre-awakening, there's no guard. This is a myth, if you watch the cooldown, on here, it's a one second cooldown. Watch here. I cast C, it's up. Cast C again, it's a skill. No matter what you go from, it's forward guard. So do not believe this myth, it's not true. With the C swap, you can combine it with Rising Storm. So, I'm in Awakening right now. If I C swap, I can do Rising Storm and then C swap again, okay? So I'm gonna do it in real time. As you can see, I press C and then did Rising Storm. It looked like I didn't even do a C swap. That is because as soon as you input the C swap, you can actually input Rising Storm. So. That, that quickly, very fast. Now, now to make this a little bit safer, it's a gimmick. Um, basically what happens is when you cancel it that quickly, so, I do this, now half of the animation of Rising Storm is going to have forward guard on it. Not the whole animation, but at least half of it. And then you can end it with another C-swap to get forward guard again, and then you can chase around. Okay, so I'm going to have forward guard on startup, and then I can end it with forward guard again. So there is a little gap they can punish you in, so you want to be very careful with this. You want to use it accordingly, so I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate. Okay, so I'm going to try and knock him down with Rising Storm, okay? 
As you can see, I escaped that one with the forward guard at the right time. Well, keep trying it. Got it off again pretty safely, as you can see. Try it again. There we go, we got the knockdown. It's a decent engage, it's sort of safe, but it can be punished, so be careful. There is a gap where they can send you in, so... This is more of a gimmick to throw out every now and then, but it's doable. Now this other one, you could say it's a gimmick, but I don't think it's a gimmick because it's so quick. It's a bit of a movement thing as well. This would be forward thrust. Now with forward thrust, if I'm an awakening, I can just hit him with it, just like that. And what's so good about forward thrust is... I could be standing right here, right, and he might he might think I stay here. Like let's say we're having a little standoff in the middle of a fight. I can randomly poke with this, and he might get stunned. So I can pretty much you know back chase once, get in super armor again, and I can see if he's stunned. And then if he's stunned, I can go right in with a rising storm, knock him down, and mess him up pretty much. Now there's two benefit to this this tactic. Um, it's very quick, they can't react to it, so I don't see this getting punished very often as long as you do it at random times. The second thing would be, it has a huge debuff on it that most Musas don't use. It's got a minus 30 accuracy rate off of it. So if you watch the debuff bar, he's got a minus 30% accuracy. You can use it when you're blocking, like this. You pretty much hold forward. Slash the air and then do forward thrust with spacebar. So I'll demonstrate. Just like the other way to be safe with it, if you want to stay in their face, is you can do C swap. Now the second use for the uh, forward blind thrust in kids is if you look on the air, I can get the 30% crit rate buff. Um, this is usually more used in open world PvP scenarios, so if you're fighting in large scale, you press C, and then you're gonna do forward thrust, and then you can keep chasing again, so watch. I'm gonna be in Awakening. You can go back into Awakening without having to do this, okay? Now, I did not mention this earlier, but if you chase in pre-Awakening, and you see swap you are stuck in that animation right there this right here you're stuck in this you can't cancel that but if you're in awakening and you press c you can cancel it immediately the remedy to that is you put one step back on your hotbar which is this skill put it on your hotbar now you can cancel the start of the skill with a chase so you can go into an iframe into a super armor or an iframe into another iframe if you have this cooldown up. This is useful because if I'm chasing and I, if I, if I want to be in awakening and I don't want to be stuck in pre-awakening, I can do forward thrust, right, chase, one step back animation and cancel it. I'm going to do that in real time. As you can see, I did my one step back animation during the chase and I got back into awakening without having to be stuck in this little animation right here. Another engage would be below the belt. You can pretty much chase and then work below the belt. That's fine. And I would think those would be all the engages. I would not... Well, I'm... I would say an honorable mention would be Crust Crusher, but it's too slow in startup, so I don't recommend it. Alright, so now we're going to get in the combo section of our video. The first thing I'd like to discuss is combo order. Combo order matters, meaning what skills I place where and when I use certain skills matters very much and I'm going to show you why. So, there are four skills in Awakening you only want to use on down attack. Except one, and I'm, I'll tell you why. So, the three main skills exactly you'd want to keep on down attack is below the belt, fiery crevice, and backflow. This is because these skills hit the hardest on our skill tree in, in PvP. The fourth one that's iffy is Crust Crusher. You can use Crust Crusher to knock down as well. Just know on down attack, it'll also hit very hard, okay? 
Crush Crusher is an exception. I would say you can use it on down attack or to knock someone down. It doesn't matter. A YouTuber named Excellion, you guys may know him. He's from the EU. He released a combo video, and I'm going to show you why those combos are not optimized. They're not good for PvP. Very big reasons why. So, one of his combos was... Twister, Shout, Crosscut, Backflow, Q, Projection, and that. The problem is, he used one of the skills you are supposed to use on down attack. Two is Shout, this CC, does no damage at all and has no armor. So if I miss this combo, I'm going into an unsafe move. So I could get CC'd here. And I'm going to go into another unsafe move, which is going to be your shout. Another unsafe move. And then you're going to do backflow, Q, projection. I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate the combo once more. And I want you to watch Fuse's health bar, okay? About 80% and I used quite a bit of skills there, okay, so. Look, I'm going to do the same end gauge as, as Excellion here, but I'm going to order the combos differently. And you're going to see, I'm going to use less skills, order it differently, and I'm going to do more damage than him. Ready? Alright, so, look, look at his health. He has maybe 5% health left in that one combo alone. I used less skills in Excellion, but I ordered them differently and I did more damage. Why? Why is this? It's because I am ordering my biggest attacks to do the most damage on down attack. I do not do them on a standing opponent. You're supposed to use your knockdowns and weakest attacks on your standing opponent. Okay? To show you the difference, I am doing Twister, Back Chase Projection, to below the belt into back blow. Okay, I could end that with Travis and most likely kill the opponent. So, as you can see, combo order does matter. You want to use certain combos on down attack. You never want to use back flow on a standing opponent. Never do that. Never use back flow on a standing or not. Never use below the belt on a standing opponent, excuse me. And never use this combo on a standing opponent. So, I have previously arranged a huge combo video for you guys. I'm going to go ahead and just put it up. I'm going to show the combos in the video.
idea that I was showing, I had my accessories off so I could do more damage, it was a while ago, but it's got most of the combos listed. There's a few combos I actually didn't mention, and I'm gonna talk about it. Combo Enders. Celian recommends you do that I don't agree with. Two reasons for this. It's only an iframe at the beginning of the skill, so if by the time I'm like here, I can just get knocked out of it and commit skill, it's just not worth it. So where I can end a combo doing a C swap, retreat slash, line thrust, back away, they're fully debuffed. So alright, so I'm gonna show you my debuff combo I do every single time I knock someone down after fire recover. As you can see, my opponent is super debuffed, accuracy, attack casting, and movement speed. So what that combo was is, I ended with Fiery Crevice, C-Swap, Blind Thrust, Backstep Slash, and then just chased away. As you can saw, Fuse was very debuffed, couldn't move, very slow, and that lets me be a little bit more offensive as well. Um, of course, Xalian recommends you do this without any reason, he doesn't tell you why. Um, it's got the iframe. However, you can get knocked out of it, where I can fully debuff my opponent, like this, and be way better off the remainder of the fight. You might fight a class such as Warrior. This is a special exception. Um, warriors, most likely, you are not going to be able to one combo a warrior. Okay, that's just how it is. They have they're very tanky for moves. I have a special debuff combo I use. So I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate. The first one is going to be called a projection trap. That's one variation of it. What that is, I hit him with projection and he was not able to move. If that hits your opponent, it's a trap. They cannot move. So this is really good actually because on warriors especially, if you knock them down with this, hit them with this, they're stuck. They can't move. See, he's trying to move. They're not going to be able to move. It's a very good trap. It can't work. The second debuff variant is going to be a mana steal, slow, and attack speed debuff. Okay, so as you can see, my opponent was very, very debuffed. Probably also had no mana. I'm gonna ask him. Yeah, so, um, as you can see, this combo is actually very handy on strikers, warriors, even in the Musa Mirror match, I, could, I would say. Um, so, just slow that down for you. It's gonna be triple shot, two hits of this, bound, and then you're gonna steal their mana, and then when they get up, they're screwed. He's so slow, minus 30 accuracy, attack and casting speed debuff, and minus 50% move speed does work quite well. I think that will conclude my combo section of the video. Um, there's really not much to say. I have already made the combo video, but I decided to maybe give some more insight on why I order combos the way I do. The combos are ordered for max damage. I also believe you should know how to use both pre-awakening and awakening with this class, mainly because you can be more aggressive and get other combos off. Because sometimes you may not have the cooldowns available to you when you stun someone. So you're going to want to be able to know each and every combo for the class. So I would say practice a lot and you will learn. You will go very good with the class, you'll have plenty of swag combos, and then you can attract people all day.